Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 14. Uh, on one of my previous shows, I talked about the Opti Electronics Scout Forder, 40, excuse me, Scout 40. And it is a uh, broad spectrum, I think 30 megahertz to 2 gigahertz, um, it's a near field receiver, it's called. It's kind of like a scanner, except it, you you can't select the bands or anything. It just it, it scan it scans that entire band within less than a second, and if it finds a strong signal, it will lock onto that signal and sh display the frequency of that signal on the display here. Now, also what I did when I did that review, I mentioned that Opti Electronics had another. Uh, receiver similar to this one again it's a near field receiver which means it can only pick up um, signals that are very strong and usually you have to be very close to them within a 200 yards or less to for it to uh, trigger and the other one that I mentioned had the capability which this does not have is that it will uh, it give you audio. So once it locks onto a signal, you can hear what's going on, just like you would on a regular scanner. Now, this is uh, this is what it looks like. Again, it's made by Opti Electronics, and as you see, there's no display on it, a digital display on it whatsoever. There's only this line that's going up and down like a series of LEDs which is an indication of the strength of the signals coming in as it's scanning. So what this one does that its little brother doesn't do is that it gives you audio but unfortunately it gives you no idea of what frequency that audio is on. So it's strictly for listening uh, as a as opposed to determining what the audio, what the frequency is, but it does a very good job, and it's the full spectrum. No, uh, this was before um, the government required that these manufacturers block out like what was cell phone analog cell phone frequencies and stuff like that. This one does the whole entire spectrum. Of course, they don't make it anymore, and this is probably vintage um, maybe 10 15 years old quite old but it works very well it does the job for what it was built for very well um, one way to improve the reception is to ch change the antenna here to an antenna that's built for a certain frequency for instance if you wanted to hear um, the 800 to 900 megahertz frequency, you would buy an antenna that was tuned for that. And now, Opti Electronics carries a whole series of antennas for these types of receivers uh, that are built for a certain frequency, like you could get one for the hand band, the 2 meter hand band. So that's how to optimize it. The, the antenna that it comes with, which I haven't been able to find, uh, is a short stubby antenna and it's supposed to be good for the whole spectrum. Of course you know that's a total compromise. Um, and I just had stuck on here for now one of my two meter um, handy talkies uh, antennas just to uh, have an antenna on it for right now. The, um, the only controls you have is uh, volume, volume control and a squelch control so you can't adjust the squelch. And um, you can't, there is a button called skip, which will let you lock out a frequency if it's just noise or uh, just a steady signal or something that you don't want to, uh, to have it track. And you just keep hitting the button and lock them out. I don't know how many times you can do that. And unfortunately, I don't have a manual for this. And I just did a search, a Google search. And I could not find a manual for it, even on the manufacturer's website. Um, I guess because it's such old technology. Again, like its little brother, it uh, 
has a built-in molded battery pack. So once that battery pack stops taking a charge, um, you have to run it on AC. And uh, I don't, I've never taken it apart to see what that battery pack looks like. But I'm assuming it's molded. It's quite heavy, so that battery pack is pretty heavy, pretty big, I mean. Uh, I know the Scout 40, which is about the same vintage, um, I charged it up the other day when I did the show on it, and it held a charge no problem. I just plugged this in, and I'm charging it now, and it's, I'll be curious to see what kind of uh, battery life it's got left in it. But uh, ver two very unique tools. Like I said, Optelectronics now has uh, newer versions of this. Uh, they integrated... In the newer versions, they integrated these two things into one radio that um, not only scans but has audio just like a scanner, except it, it doesn't work like a scanner in that you can program it. It just goes out there and brute forces itself to scan at full spectrum and look for the um, highest signal and stops on that. And in the case of the new one, you can hear the audio, and you can, and it does display the frequency. I uh, think that particular model is quite expensive. I think it's near 450. I think is the price, the retail price. Um, so, pretty handy little devices. Uh, were great, kind of cutting edge technology at the time. And as I mentioned, one of my very first, excuse me. One of my very first shows is a very cheap way to do the same thing, except you don't get the frequency. Yes, you do you get the frequency. Is to buy one of the Radio Shack uh, 92 model Pro 92 scanners, which has that capability. Matter of fact, most of the newer Radio Shack scanners have that capability that these things have not had. And I think it's called Signal Stalker. And it basically does the same thing. You sit it in the Signal Stalker mode. It scans the full spectrum. Now, keep in mind that the newer radios um, have some areas that are blanked out because of FCC and government requirements. So it doesn't do the entire spectrum. It jumps over a couple areas that are not allowed anymore. And uh, But... They are, like I said, uh, like I said in that show, that um, that Radio Shack scanner, which again is obsolete, but some of their newer ones have the same function. But that other one, if you just wanted to use it for that function, you can find used on eBay for less than fifty dollars. So they've kind of replaced these two things. They, I've tested them and I've used them quite a bit. They do the job but not as well as these two dedicated devices did the job. They're kind of a compromise. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. So that's the, uh, the show for today. I'm sorry for the uh, last show. I had an audio problem, uh, actually a setup problem. I had changed uh, my mixer, bought a new mixer, and I didn't have the feedback from um, my computer back into uh, what I was recording on the video. So when I played Andy's um, YouTube video, I didn't have any audio. I had the video, but I didn't have any audio. Uh, I tried to hook it up today and realized the reason I didn't hook it up before is I'm missing two adapters. So I'd go get me some adapters, get it hooked up, and then when I play back uh, live off the Internet, uh, video and slash audio, I'll have the audio portion too. And now there's a way I can work around it is to actually download the uh, the video slash audio and then play it back as a file and then it does uh, broadcast the audio and video at the same time. So I can do that right now for the time being until I get some adapters. So that's the show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any comments, please leave me a comment. Um, Anything I apparently are doing wrong, which is probably doing a lot of things wrong, or um, um, any suggestions for shows you'd like to see, you know, products that you'd like to review, or even maybe I don't own it. Maybe I can find a review on YouTube or f 
look it up on uh, uh, on the internet via Google and do a review of it. Find some reviews of it, whatever. Uh, please send me a comment or send me an email at trrs73 at gmail.com. That's trrs73 at gmail.com. I think I said that right the first time, but maybe I said it wrong the first time. trrs73 at gmail.com. So that's the show for today. I hope you're enjoying these videos and I'm enjoying doing them. Just struggling with these uh, technical difficulties, which I hope to uh, iron out and won't be a problem on later shows. Bye-bye.